So for the last 21 years, he has been the member for Mulgrave, and for the last nine, he has been the Premier of Victoria. And I do take this opportunity to wish Mr Andrews well with his family and all that he does in the future. But at a time like this, it's also important to face the facts. And the facts are that Premier Daniel Andrews is standing down today because things have fallen apart. We've seen it day after day, one crisis after another. The legacy that Daniel Andrews leaves is a state that is broke. Victoria is broke, we know it, we see the evidence of it every day. And whether it is mounting debt, $200 billion more than any other state, more than many other states combined, a debt of over $200 billion that generations of Victorians will have to pay for and make sacrifices for. This level of debt will compromise the future we all want to leave for following generations. In Victoria, we're paying something like $15 million a day in interest, and that figure will only grow with no sign that the economic future we can give to our children and future generations will be better than the one we inherited. We live in a state of the highest taxes. Daniel Andrews' legacy on taxes is that he leaves a state whose people pay the highest taxes in the country more than any other state. And what do we get for it? Those taxes are slated to grow over the forward estimates. So the taxes we pay today, whether it's taxes on jobs, whether it's taxes on rent, whether it's work cover premiums going through the roof, whether it's a new schools tax that punishes families who want to send their kids to independent schools, whether it's the health tax that Daniel Andrews will place on GPs, which will make it more expensive for families, particularly those doing it in financial circumstances that are tough will either pay higher out-of-pocket expense, expenses or lose access to bulk billing. And just last week, we saw the Premier introduce a new holiday tax, which he admitted will do nothing to address the housing crisis. And all it will do is raise money to fix budget black holes in Homes Victoria, the agency Daniel Andrews established in 2020 to deliver social and affordable housing. Ever since, it has been run with cumulative deficits over a quarter of a billion dollars. We face the prospect of major projects continuing to blow out. Daniel Andrews' legacy is major projects blowing out by more than $30 billion, part of that debt that future generations of Victoria, Victorians will pay for. And what do we have to show for it? In all of the nine years that Daniel Andrews has been Premier, not one major single project has been completed. They are all over budget and all behind schedule, with impacts on the rest of our economy. After nine years in office, are we better off under Daniel Andrews? It takes longer to wait for a hospital bed. It takes longer to wait for an ambulance. It costs more than anywhere else in the country to send your kid to a government school in Victoria. And in many cases, academic standards in our schools have stagnated. Our child protection system is in crisis, sadly. Our roads are being terribly neglected. In regional Victoria, potholes that could pose a serious uh, threat to life and serious injury are not being fixed. Why? Because Victoria is broke. Daniel Andrews has made his announcement today because, frankly and regrettably, the truth caught up with him. You can only make false promises and get away with it for so long. Sooner or later, eventually, the truth catches up with you. We saw that with the SEC. A glossy promise before the last election, but not a real dollar to show for it. Only an empty jacket now, with no plan for our energy future. That represents a serious attempt to provide reliability and affordability when it comes to energy. Victorians and households and businesses are paying more for their energy than ever before, with no relief in sight. Daniel Andrews went to the last election promising Commonwealth Games here in Victoria, with particular focuses on regional Victoria. We now know that the Commonwealth Games promise was always just a hoax, a con. One that not only will cost Victorians more than $600 million in losses, compensation and other losses, not to mention the broader economic impacts because of this decision. Perhaps more importantly than the financial legacy of the Commonwealth Games debacle, Daniel Andrews' legacy is that he trashed Victoria's represent, uh, reputation not only around our country, Daniel Andrews trashed Victoria's reputation around the world. 
Around the world, they talk about how Victoria reneged on its commitment to hold the Commonwealth Games. And maybe it is the case that had a proper business case been done, no decision should ever reasonably have been made to hold the Commonwealth Games. But that's not the point. The point was Daniel Andrews, on a hoax, on a con, committed our state to the Commonwealth Games and then backed out unceremoniously and in the most humiliating way for Victorians. And we'll pay the price for that for a very long time. That's not a legacy you can be proud of. And then, just last week, Daniel Andrews made promises to the Victorian people that he would fix our housing crisis. He looked them in the eye and he promised them that he would deliver 800,000 new homes in 10 years. He might as well have promised 8 million homes in 10 years because in 12 months' time, we won't see 80,000 homes. And in 12 months' time, Daniel Andrews will not be here to deliver on that promise. He made a promise to the Victorian people last week when he knew that he was going to resign today. That's not a legacy anyone can be proud of. Victorians know the challenges we now face as a result of corruption, as a result of incompetence and terrible waste. And all of this comes at a price. It means that we have to miss out on other important things, whether it's health, education, child protection, access to justice, better roads, better community facilities. That's the price we pay when a government is incompetent, corrupt or wasteful. My vision is for a very different Victoria, one where we believe passionately that we have to build prosperity in our state so that we can share that prosperity no matter where you live, whether it's in inner Melbourne, outer Melbourne, our growth corridors or our rural and regional areas. The way to do that is to make Victoria a place to invest, an attractive destination. You don't discourage investment in Victoria by jacking up payroll taxes, land taxes, schools taxes, health taxes and now holiday taxes. All that does is tell people that it's too hard to invest in Victoria. My vision is very different. My vision is the key to jobs and financial security, access to hospitals and ambulances when you need them, wherever you need them, is to build prosperity in our state, to believe in our ability to create an engine room for the nation. Victoria has always been a proud leader when it comes to economic development and growth. I want to get us back to that point. Why? Because ultimately we're here to look after people. And you look after people when you give them an economy that gives them jobs and hospitals that are functional and accessible. Schools where we have teachers and buildings that are conducive to good learning uh, with supports for kids who need it. Child protection services that can look after those who are most disadvantaged. You can't do that if you don't build an economy that serves the people. And that's what we're here to do. There's another legacy that I want to talk about. Daniel Andrews has trashed Victoria's reputation as a state that once upon a time led the nation in ethical standards of governance. We had a public service that was regarded widely and indisputably as the best in the country. That's no longer the case. But it's not beyond us as a state. As an alternative Premier, I promise the Victorian people one of my top priorities will be to re-establish Victoria's reputation for ethical governance, where the public service is allowed to do the job we need it to do, to provide frank and fearless advice. And that's not some esoteric side issue. The ability of our agencies and stakeholders and departments to provide frank and fearless advice, what can that mean? It may mean that you don't have the tragedy of hotel quarantine because you have lots of people providing government with the best advice. You don't have blowouts. On John Pizzuto, the Victorian opposition leader, a day where he might think he's back in the, back in the game because the big figure, the huge figure in Victorian and Australian politics, Dan Andrews, has announced he's resigning. He's the 48th Premier of Victoria. He's been Premier since December of 2014. As of 5pm tomorrow, that will be no more.